Revolution Bike Park. It's big, it's fast, and in some places massively technical. And it's also home to some of the biggest jumps that you'll ever find at a UK bike park. And I've been invited here to try and hit the 50 to 1 line top to bottom on my e-mountain bike. And I'm wondering if I've bitten off a bit more than my motor and battery could possibly handle. Welcome to Langi, Langin, Langit, Lang, Langanog. Yep, you guessed it, we're here in Wales. We're at the infamous 50 to 1 huge jump line, which may be one of the biggest jump lines here in the UK. These jumps are comparable in size as to what we see the world's top level athletes hitting on a slope style course such as Crankworks. Absolute monsters. So I'm not even halfway down this epic 50 to 1 line, and already I'm getting pretty scared by the size of some of these features. The 50 to 1 crew is a bunch of guys from up north who are all pretty crazy on two wheels with a massive skill set and a ton of style. They're headed up by the crazy trio of Josh Bryson, who's 2014 World Cup downhill champ, Josh Lewis, who's king of the jibs, and downhill powerhouse, Sam Dale. Now those boys absolutely live and breathe mountain biking and they joined up with the Revolution Build crew here and created this monster line back in 2017. So this crazy run down the hill here at Revolution has 13 chances to get your wheels off the ground. And it's not just your standard set of jumps. We've got huge doubles, step downs, shark fin gaps, and the finale, these huge moto metal ramps. So I was chatting to a couple of guys on the uplift about the 50 to one line, and they said it's pretty brutal. And I'm guessing this is the aftermath of the guy that supposedly snapped his penis off when he came up short. Not something I want to be doing. This is a little different from your average jumps at your bike park. It isn't just a straight run of jumps down the hill. It's a jump trail that winds its way down the hill and has all sorts of different shapes and size takeoffs that have to be hit at a high speed of around 30 miles per hour. And of course, weather conditions play a massive part as to how achievable this line will be. Prime conditions would be in the summer with dry conditions and the sun with very little wind. Today we've got wind, we've got a wet surface, so it's gonna be a bit of a struggle with a lower rolling speed when those tires hit the dirt. Well, it all starts from the start hill here. High speed run up to the first hit, which is the qualifier jump. Now the qualifier's jump's job is to actually allow you access to the line. So if you're having problems trying to clear this thing, either casing it or not getting enough speed, then you definitely don't wanna head any further because it definitely gets a lot bigger as we go down the hill. Now one of the other hits here on the hill on the 50 to 1 line is this huge shark fin gap. And as I mentioned earlier, there's some hips that go to the left and there's some that go to the right. And a rider will definitely have a favoured way of turning and taking off. So these are a definite challenge as they wind their way down the hill. I'm not going to lie, these are probably some of the biggest ramps I've ever hit in my whole career of riding bikes. I'm really curious as to see how big and how long these jumps are you want to see me slide back down this and get cheese grated, do you? Look at it. I don't actually know. It's uh, pretty steep, isn't it? It's like being on Ninja Warrior, right? Oh, oh, oh. It's not beat the... Go on, go on. Oh, 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 oh. oh. 6.8 meters long just for the takeoff on this. So let's take a look at how high it is as well. Well, I'm just under two meters, about 1.9. So I guess that's pretty much two of me. So nearly four meters high. And the final distance on this jump is again, nine meters. But the difference on this one is the trajectory of that ramp is a lot steeper. So this one is gonna pop you literally into the stratosphere. And you've got a huge landing down here. So to the sweet spot, you are probably talking of around 10 or 11 meters plus the air that you get on this thing you're probably going to be up nearly in those trees I'd imagine. Strategy for today is to nail this line one by one jump by jump and part of this is going to be the line that you choose uh, to get you down the hill is definitely going to be very important. Luckily enough on this line it's got quite a polished line all the way down and if you were to deviate from this you're going to be in the loose gravel and you're going to be losing speed and a possibility of sliding out. 
And of course, the speed that you carry is really important. You want to hit every landing at a sweet spot. And if you case or you over jump, you definitely need to pull out. And again, that's one of the biggest difference between riding an e-mountain bike and a mountain bike. With a mountain bike, you can sometimes stick a few cranks in and send it. On an e-bike, well, you definitely want to be pulling out that line and heading back to the top. Let's take a look at the bike that I'm choosing to ride here at Revolution. Well, this is my trusty Kinevo. It's a big travel bike. It's got a Brose motor on there, 90 Newton meters of torque, 700 watt hour battery. And this thing rolls on 27.5 wheels, which is bang on for a bit of bike park action. But for the setup today, well, I stiffened up my suspension. I've added quite a few more PSI into the fork and the rear shock. So it probably only sags to about 20% instead of that standard 30 to 40% sag that I'd usually uh, use for like downhill riding. So big, stiff suspension on this bike. Slowed that rebound down just a tad as well because you don't want that kicking up. And of course, tire pressure. Well, for today, I've got about 40 PSI in there. It gives me a fast rolling tire that's super predictable when it comes to hitting those turns too. And recording all the data, I've got my Garmin Edge 830 up front. That's gonna give me all the vital stats from how many jumps and how fast I've been. I'm running a full face helmet, full finger gloves, and of course some knee pads. And that's a very minimal protection that you definitely want for hitting jumps such as these. Whoa. Oh my God. <laughs> I literally just went to flat, totally to flat, back wheel to flat on that massive jump down there. Landed actually at the bottom of the landing. Good job. I can either, I can take that sort of hit. Piecing it together like a big jigsaw puzzle, playing it safe. I think it's the best way to do this. I'd love someone to be here to tow me in, to show me the speeds, but I'm just using my hopefully expert knowledge to judge the speed and distance to work our way down this trail. Getting there, the confidence meter is gradually rising. No, it just doesn't look like many people have hit it, have they? I know. And the thing is with the big one, at least you can jump up onto the top and just get an idea of the pop, I think. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I'm gonna do that first. Just yeah. get there and like, onto the top. I'll do the same. And then work out. I think that jump is the same size as the next one, I would say. Whoa! Uh, one last big one, there's a couple of berms and a few shark fins after that, but slowly piecing it together and I'm glad to see other guys are struggling as well. It's pretty scary, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> scary stuff, so just all helping each other out. If we notice something that's short or long, we tell each other and keeping each other safe as well. So, you're my wingman, let's do it. I'm 41, you don't want granddad to do it, do you? <laughs> Ah! Oh, f ow. F You're so annoying, it's like the last bit of the track. All right, here we go then, 50 to one. Right at the bottom, the bottom.
So there we go, 50 to one line completed on an e-bike, I can't believe it. Probably the most amount of air that I've ever got on an e-bike to be fair, or any bike. And I think actually I felt a lot more comfortable on my e-bike on those huge jumps than I ever did on a standard mountain bike. And again, I think it comes down to that weight making the bike super stable. But let's take a quick look at the Garmin as to how many jumps we did and how fast we went and all that interesting stuff that you can get from one of these. So the track itself, 0.3 miles with an average speed, well, maximum speed of 28.7. But we wanna know about the jumps. So we've got 13 jumps in total on this track. And the biggest one is actually mind blowing the data that the Garmin has picked up from this. It says 71 feet with a hang time of 1.9 seconds and a takeoff speed of 25.67. So I'm guess, guessing that is on that huge metal kicker, which was super terrifying. I won't be, uh, I'm not gonna lie to you, that was super scary and probably one of the biggest jumps. But it just goes to show how capable an e-bike is at one of these big sort of free ride jump parks and hitting that sort of stuff. Come out the end of it, ride back up to the top, session it, jigsaw all those pieces together and have a whale of uh, fun on your e-bike and they can definitely jump. So don't let anyone tell you, you can't jump an e-bike. But let us know down in the comments box down below about whether you jump your e-bike and how you get on with it. Give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and make sure you subscribe to us here on EMBN.